Hey everybody, in this video, we're gonna talk about the first fundamental theorem of calculus, which gives us a way to evaluate definite integrals. The first fundamental theorem of calculus states that if little f of x is continuous on the closed interval a to b, then the integral from a to b of f of x dx equals capital F of b minus capital F of a. This finds the exact area under a curve. Now you may be wondering, what is capital F? Well, capital F is the antiderivative of little f of x. So the crazy cool thing about this theorem is that it forms a link between antiderivatives and areas under a curve. So let's take a look at the notation. Here we have the integral from a to b of little f of x dx. a is called the lower limit of integration and b is called the upper limit of integration. Little f of x dx is the integrand, and remember dx is called the differential. Capital F is the antiderivative of little f of x, and capital F of b minus capital F of a gives the exact area under little f of x from a to b. Now you might be wondering, what about plus c? The constant that we need to add to the antiderivative function. Well, technically what happens is when we find the integral from a to b of little f of x dx, we get capital F of x plus c, but we're gonna evaluate that from a to b. And just a side note about the notation here, this vertical line with the a to b means that we're gonna evaluate the antiderivative function using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And that gives us capital F of b plus c minus the quantity of capital F of a plus c and the c's cancel out, so we're left with capital F of b minus capital F of a. Okay, let's do some examples. Evaluate the integral from one to three of x dx. So the first thing we need to do is find the antiderivative function, which is x squared over two, and we're gonna evaluate that from one to three using the fundamental theorem of calculus. That gives us three squared over two minus one squared over two, which simplifies to four. And that's the exact area under the function f of x equals x from one to three. Let's do another one. Evaluate the integral from zero to pi of sine x dx. Well, the antiderivative is negative cosine x, and we'll evaluate that from zero to pi using the fundamental theorem of calculus. So that gives us negative cosine pi minus negative cosine zero, and that simplifies to one plus one, which is two. Isn't that kind of cool and fascinating that the area under sine x from zero to pi turns out to be a whole number? Okay, let's try this one. The integral from zero to two of x squared minus three x plus one dx. Well, the antiderivative is x cubed over three minus three x squared over two plus x, and we'll evaluate that from zero to two. And when we do this, we get negative four thirds. Now you might be wondering, how can the answer possibly be negative? So let's take a look at a graph of x squared minus three x plus one. So as we integrate from zero to two, the shaded region above the x-axis is considered positive, and the shaded region below the x-axis is considered negative. And since there's more shading in the negative region, the final answer will be negative. Now I want you to practice. Pause the video and try these two problems on your own. And now as we wrap up this video, make sure that you have the first fundamental theorem of calculus memorized. And that's how you rock calculus.